today a very close ally to president William Samae Ruto uh, that is Ahmed Nasir made the following comments on his ex account it's cruel and callous to criticize president Ruto's government it's inhumane to condemn it for its palpable incompetence and runaway corruption this government needs Kenya's collective pity and prayers I mean how can you finance how can your finance bill 2023 stroke 2024 be declared unconstitutional so that is a critical question and from his post i think he is uh, satirizing uh, or showing some uh, sarcastic comment uh, to this government and maybe just because he's a friend to dr william samuel ruto and that's why he does not want to say it directly as it is so in this video i want us to assess his comments critically to see its validity and uh, we will also uh, listen to one of uh, very very important leaders in kenya that is okia omtata in my view mm. ruto must go hey. yeah. because mm. what are the what is the grounds for removal of a president inability to govern one of the grounds mm. and ruto is unable to govern Resetting him to 2022, whose, whose budget was that? It was his and, and Uhuru's. Yeah, that was Uhuru's budget. Uhuru was the president. Mm. Yeah, look what's mm. Uhuru was the president. Mm -hmm. Now, his budget, he's now supposed to be spending, we are, are supposed to be in the, he should be executing his third budget. Mm. The one inherited from Uhuru is unimplemented, the 2022 one. Yeah. Because Uhuru, virtually from July, uh, from July, from June 30th, 2023, was basically a lame duck. Mm. We're just holding for somebody. Mm. So then we then who, who implemented that budget. Mm -hmm. The second one was the one that was uh, 2023, mm -hmm. the Finance Act that has been rejected mm -hmm. by the courts. And the uh, third one is the one that was rejected by the public. Mm -hmm. So if he cannot, he cannot pass a budget, mm. He's unable to govern. Because the only policy document you have in a government is a budget. So if your budgets are rejected twice, you lose legitimacy to govern. He cannot govern. And that's one of the grounds in the Constitution for removal of a president. Now, as you can see, Okio Tata says that Ruto should go home. Now, before we really start diving into our conversation today, if you are new to a comment to our uh, platform, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. Now, Ahmed Nasir is raising a very, very critical point. And uh, the point he says is that the regime that is being led by Dr. William Samuel to the current pres president of Kenya is very incompetent and doesn't really deserve criticism. Instead, it needs prayers. And uh, uh, that clearly means that him as an individual is also not, uh, he doesn't have faith in this regime in the sense that uh, it has lost its ability really to work for Kenyans. Everything is in chaos. Uh, people are complaining about uh, bad economy. People are complaining about abductions. People are complaining in the health. People are complaining in education. Everything, nothing is working. Nothing is working totally. Even as we are speaking here, they are still in the process of vetting the new cabinet secretaries who are to take up the position. The finance bill that they came up uh, that is the 2024 was annulled or was rejected by the public now the finance bill which had uh, which had been working or which was now supposed to take over after the 2024 one uh, was uh, was withdrawn is also null and void now what does this mean i think for me uh, this simply means that this regime uh, has failed 
uh, and as Okio Mtata puts it very clearly, one of the core mandate or the core responsibility of the president or the executive is to come up or draft a finance bill which will help in financing the budget of the particular year. If the government has failed in one of its core mandate, then it simply means that it is not able uh, really to give Kenyans or provide Kenyans with that which the constitution has really given them as their right. And as basing on the Okiom Tata sentiment, I think I agree with him, it is very reasonable or it is really uh, out of respect and courtesy that the president needs just to maybe uh, give another person an opportunity or it is time to seek for an alternative kind of leadership because nothing is working at all. How, how can uh, your, all your finance bill stop working? All your finance bill, all of them are unconstitutional. Apart from that, everyone is complaining in the street. And for me, I, will, I wouldn't agree with the idea of uh, Ahmed Nasir saying that we need to pity him or we need to pray for him. Why would you pray for an individual who came into power or who took the, the opportunity with the knowledge that leadership is about serving the people? For how long will we pray for him? In fact, not so long ago, uh, the very president brought this American preacher by the name Benin at Uhuru Park. Was it at Uhuru Park or Kasarani to pray? And the idea was to pray uh, for people. So as Kenyans to uh, to be um, a good country or to ac actually to run away from or to get saved from the problems that were currently happening. Did it work? It didn't. As you are speaking now here, the office of the deputy uh, president is, uh, is has an office of the first lady, who is Dorcas Rigadi. Dorcas Rigadi is a bishop and he has been praying all through all through, has the prayers worked? No. The office of the first lady, that is um, the wife to the president, has a budget for intercession and praying. They have been praying all through. They have been intercessing. I think it's called intercession something. They have been walking all throughout the country, praying, praying, praying. At some point, uh, uh, the first lady even said that they will pray that they will... They, Kenya will be getting rain in large amount of, uh, in very large amount, and there will be no uh, any lack of food, and the people will be happy. What happened later? People discovered that they had been given information from the meteorological department that there will be a very heavy rainfall, which actually led to El Nino. Instead of giving people the information about the El Nino, they wanted now to. Uh, make it look like they have, are the ones who had predicted uh, the rainfall. Now, when the rainfall came, it really led to the loss of property, loss of life of people, and caused a lot of destruction. And at that particular time, the first lady was very quiet, no comment. In fact, it was as if she was not available. So what's my point here? My point here is that we cannot pity for an individual or a person or a regime which doesn't pity us, a regime that looks at people or the pub public financial with a lot of disdain. And we can also not pray for people who are not really even receptive of the prayers. And even the Bible says that you cannot pray without acting. Prayers without action is dead. You need to show the intent of acting and working so that the prayers can work. If indeed prayers without a working works, then we will have been very, very far. Because as I've told you, this government has tried all means of prayers, which also I do not believe that they are really genuine. So my parting shot in this video is that it is high time that we look or we prioritize competency over uh, uh, political uh, rewards, competency over religious convictions, competency over regional uh, interest, competency over tribe interest. So that we need to have people who have really uh, com 
competent uh, skills or who are competent enough to run the country and each and every other thing will take care of itself when we 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 not we, we cannot agree with ahmed nasir saying that we have to pity a person who does not really care about us a person who whose interest at no point does it converge with our interests as Kenyans. I think Ahmed Dasir needs also now to come out clearly. I have been following his comments of late and he seems not really to be in love with this regime despite the fact that he's among the individuals or the people who supported it and opposed the opposition candidate who was at that particular time Raila Amolo Odinga who has even now joined the very government. So I don't know what you think about this. Please feel free to show opinion at the comment box so that we can continue with this kind of conversation. Until we meet again, bye bye.